Shares of Lululemon hitting highs not seen since last April after yesterday's strong second quarter report. The athleisure retailer boosting guidance on its growth in China business and really growth all around. That stock now tracking for its sixth straight day of gains. Stephanie, I want to start with you, but I want to read this quote from Jeffrey. So many of the analysts obviously very bullish on Lululemon, but this really stood out to me. Uh, Jeffrey's, I believe this is Randall Koenig saying, the reality here is that the brand, being Lulu, is as strong as it's going to be. While the belt bag tailwind will become a headwind, the U.S. consumer is slowing, China growth could be uneven, and Lulu isn't Nike and never will be. Yet its market cap is a third of Nike, which makes no sense to us. You own Nike. What do you make of Nike, Lululemon, and the commentary from Jeffries here? It's rare that Nike trades at a discount to Lululemon, and that is the, the occurrence right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That being said, this was a phenomenal report. 11, 11 comp, 13 no. constant currency comp, DTC up 15%, China up 61%. So for, for those of you that have heard me say the China consumer is on its way back, This is actually confirmation of that, and I have been on that theme for a really long time, pretty much all year, that I think that the reopening is going to help the Chinese consumer, and that's to your probably your Baba buy, right, as well. Um, But I think Nike has earnings power of something like $6.50 over the next couple of years, and a lot of that is really just margin. A lot of that is freight costs coming down, better pricing, better inventory control. And so I like this name. It's not cheap. It's never cheap. It's another compounder. But I do like their positioning, and I like the fact that they have 15% exposure in China. So they should benefit as well as the consumer does recover there. The number's obviously phenomenal growth, as you point out, in the United States and China specifically. However, the growth rates did slow from last quarter in China, from, I think, 79% growth to 61 Does that concern you at all? Mm, No. No. I think it's a little lumpy. You know, I I was also very impressed with the gross margins. You saw those Mm. gross margins. Oh, yeah, 58.8. Right? Yeah. I mean, just huge. They're they're just killing it. They really are. But you're paying a multiple for it. So you have to decide what you want. And for me, you know, I can only own so many of these Amazons of the world. So I am more valuation centric. And even though this is expensive, it's it's definitely cheaper than it has been historically. Jim, I I understand you might be interested in Nike, not so much Lulu. Why? Uh, Well, I run a concentrated portfolio. So first off, I'm very light in retail right now. I am looking. But as I said earlier, I think that the sentiment in the market about the consumer is likely to falter in September. So I'm not going to rush in here. But if I'm going to choose in a concentrated portfolio, between Nike and Lululemon, it's really a no-brainer for me to go with a Nike. I have nothing negative to say about Lululemon. Actually, the multiple looks a lot better than it has in many years. It's a fine business. Um, But just if you're you're going to be concentrated, you want to go for the best in the industry, and that would be Nike. What I've been saying is another 10% lower from here. Get this at a mid-20s forward multiple. That's a very attractive price to get this. Now, maybe that comes because, who knows, maybe China, some bad data comes out and the market weakens on that. Or, as I said, worries about the consumer, uh, credit card delinquencies, credit card uh, overall balances. Something's likely to happen in the next couple of weeks to give me a shot at that apple. 